Bible friends. Hope you're doing well. Thank you for joining me on another All Hands on Tech Live with your host, David Neal. Hope you're having a, a wonderful day. And thanks again for joining. Uh, do give me a shout on the chat at any point. Um, if you want to ask any questions, uh, I'd love to hear where you're coming from. And if this is your first time joining the stream, or if you're uh, a repeat <laughs> customer, so to speak, um, we are building a desktop application using Electron, which is essentially Node.js, uh, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and um, Chromium. Uh, so Node.js is used to, to launch the application. Chromium is used to render the UI for the application. And to anyone uh, using the app who may not be uh, suspecting it uh, would would never, you know, it's possible that they never know that it's essentially a web-based application. You can build native uh, looking applications and native uh, functioning applications. Electron supports a lot of uh, kind of uh, operating system APIs that, uh, so you as a developer, as you're using Electron and using the APIs that are available, you don't have to really think about most of the time if it's going to run on Linux or Mac or Windows, it just works like it's supposed to on, on those operating systems. It gives uh, folks an, a native experience as far as like menus and dialogues and uh, the way Windows behave. And um, uh, it's, a, it's a great uh, stack of technology for building uh, desktop apps. If you've used Visual Studio Code or the Slack desktop or GitHub desktop or a number of other apps, those are all built with Electron. And uh, it's it's a lot of fun to, to work with, I think. Um, so in these, this series of streams that we've been doing for several weeks now, we've been building a teleprompter application uh, that is used to um, render a script up on the screen so that you can follow along if you're, say, you're giving an interview over um, Zoom or some teleconferencing software or you're presenting, uh, maybe giving a talk virtually, you can have a script up on your screen that you can, uh, that overlays whatever you may have, maybe your your um, your slides, or it may be a teleconference app that you're using to on a call, and uh, you can um, uh, create a script to to do that. To give you an example, this is my setup here in my, in my office. I've got my laptop here and another screen over here, and I've got a teleprompter screen right above here that mirrors the content that's on my laptop so that I can look straight into the camera as I'm speaking and yet see a script in front of that camera um, so that I can have a prompt as to you know the things that I want to say or the questions that I want to ask. It's a, a, a great uh, tool to have, uh, especially in these days when you know so many of us are working remotely um, or having to give talks uh, uh, remotely or, you know, in this day of creating content, creating videos uh, for like YouTube and, and other places where it's, it's so much, it's a much better experience for folks who are watching your videos uh, so that you continue to make eye contact with the camera uh, and not be looking away at your notes or your or your script. Uh, to give you a um, 
a, a quick recap of where we are. Last week, we we started working on um, a menu for the application so that you could load uh, any markdown file. We got as far as selecting a file, but we haven't yet uh, implemented the code to open that file and read the contents and and render that script into the window. Right now, the the script is hard coded, uh, sort of speak in the in the project. So hope to wrap that up today. Um, should shouldn't be a whole lot more refactoring and work to do to uh, read in a markdown file, turn that into um, convert that to HTML. We've already done that work before. Um, so it's just a matter of, you know, refactoring the code to put it in the right, right place, uh, do it in the right spot, and then hand that H, that rendered HTML off to the, uh, the other part of the app that's going to display it on the screen. Yes, Randall, this would, uh, <laughs> this is absolutely great for, for interviews because you can, um, maybe have, um, a a script of say ten questions that you want to ask your your candidates, and when you're conducting a, an interview, and instead of you know looking off to the side or or you know looking at at notes, you can continue to make eye contact with the camera and ask questions uh, naturally, um, and that that really helps. Folks who are on the other side who are watching your video feel more at ease because you're you're continuing to engage with them and make eye contact. Um, it really it really makes a big difference. Like some of the best, if you you know you may not notice it, um, but if you pay attention, the best videos that you may watch, like training videos or um, some of your favorite content creators on on platforms like youtube they maintain eye contact with the the camera throughout um things that they're doing unless they purposefully say okay on this step we're going to do this and they turn to the side and work on a, a particular item and then they come back and and talk right so really good stuff um before we jump in uh i want to uh, tell folks that the source code for everything that we're doing is online on my uh, GitHub repository. If you go to github.com slash reverent geek slash electron dash teleprompter, you can get the source code. You can post um, any issues or questions that you have into that repository. You can make suggestions on how we may want to improve the application or if you you know jump ahead of the class and love diving into this and building stuff you know maybe you want to submit a pull request and say here's here's a um you know a new set of code or a new feature that i've added and you know we could cover that in a future stream that would be really cool so grab the the source code um the the instructions for how to use it are in the readme but uh, in a nutshell you need to have some newer version of node.js installed and you download that source code run npm install to install the dependencies that are needed and then you can run um, npm start to start the application and speaking of which Let's jump over to my screen and I will show you. This is the code that we were last working on um, in our last stream, which is the menu, uh, how we can build platform agnostic menus in Electron and be able to show that, um, you know, as we're building a menu, it Electron knows how to render that menu on um, Windows and Linux and uh, Mac OS. So as you can see, I'm, I'm looking at my screen over here and I can still talk to you here in uh, 
the little preview window. Uh, but just to see that everything is still working as we expect, I'm going to run npm start in this project, and it's going to launch Electron. And uh, the the script may not be really visible to you, but it's it's really visible to me on the monitor. Um, let me hide these other windows so that you can see it better. So we have a. It, this is a markdown file. If you're not familiar with markdown syntax, it's a really um, terse, uh, simple, simplified uh, mark, uh, markup syntax where um, it's designed so that uh, you can use, uh, well, let me just show you. So the file is con content.markdown. These things get turned into bullet a bulleted list, and hashtags are what designate uh, headings in the document. So the application reads this file, converts the markdown syntax into HTML, and displays that in this translucent window. It's, it's got transparency so that it overlays whatever other content you've got on the monitor. And this is what allows me to overlay onto, say, my slides or Zoom or Google Hangouts or whatever, Google Meet, whatever I'm using to, to do video, and I can follow along my script. One of the features that we added in the previous uh, stream is the ability to use a clicker or the keyboard to advance from one block of um, script to another. So if I use my keyboard, I can jump to point two, I can jump to point three, and if I hit the left arrow to go back, I can jump back to point one and the first point. I can also use my my uh, trackpad or mouse to scroll through the script as well. So everything's working great, but in order for us to, you know, kind of get this application across the finish line, and be able to share it with other people besides us nerds who <laughs> who know how to uh, you know run programs and write software and use source code uh, we need to do a couple of things one is we need to be able to open a script file and render that into in here and we need to be able to package the application in a way that's that's going to uh, be like a standalone executable or a, a an installer that someone can run and install the app onto their system. So that will be after we finish today's work of being able to open a file. That'll be kind of like the last step in our uh, minimum viable product, if you will, um, is to package everything so that it can run on each operating system, create an installer for each each operating system. And then you have, in a nutshell, how to build a, an Electron desktop app that you could apply to, you know, whatever cool and fun project that you have. Uh, if you want to use this in, in work or use it as a fun side project or, you know, s find some other uh, cool use for building a desktop app. All right. So where we dropped off last time was building a menu. And we got as far as we've got a file menu with open and we have a, a keyboard accelerator. So if we use command O or control O on Windows, this will open up the file uh, open dialog and give us, um, allow us to select a file, a markdown file, and uh, open that. But, um, I just remembered one of the things that I wanted to do is see if there's a way to filter this show open dialog to just open markdown and text files. We don't want someone to be able to, op you know, <laughs> load just any file we want it to be specifically um a markdown file or 
a, a text file, a text file that contains Markdown. So um, let's open up the uh, documentation. File, open, dialog. And let's see if we can find a way to filter the files that, that are shown. Um, so we've got a default path, filters, right there optional that appears to be a list of extensions um let's see if there's any examples yes there is cool Let's take this code, or at least the filters part, because we've already got an object here with properties. I'm assuming it's part of this this show open dialog. We got properties and options, maybe. File pass, bookmarks, filters. Yeah, I think this is where it's supposed to go. And to change this to markdown, we want MD files and text files. And then just to be nice, let's allow all files. So if a person knows, you know, um, maybe they've got a different naming scheme on their system uh, for, for uh, markdown files should still allow them to, to be able to select other files. So let's run this. I'm going to quit the application and start it again. Minimize this other stuff. And we've got our file open. And Let's see. It seems to be working because the only files that are showing up uh, don't know how well you can see that. But the only files showing up as being selectable, everything else is grayed out, are the ones that have the markdown extension. So our client inside our client folder, there's a content.markdown right now. That's the one that's embedded in our project that we're using to to test with, so I can open that. And if I look at the um, console, because we've got a console log statement, it gives me the path to that file. So the filtering is, is working, I believe. We've got one other, let's do Command O, and that opens it up. I should be able to, Um, maybe it's options. Yes. On Mac OS, you can click options and change the for format. So if I do all files, then all the files are now available to be selected, whether they <laughs> uh, are actual markdown files or not. So that, that's working like I would expect. Um, one of these days, I'm going to set up a, a, uh, a, 
virtual machine on my computer because I need to be able to run Windows and Linux on here as well so that we can we can make sure that the app is working like we expect on those operating systems. Let me bring up uh, chat. Make sure I haven't missed any questions. Again, um, of course, if if there's anything that I'm covering uh, along the way that that doesn't make sense to you, or you have questions about, or you have comments on, please drop those in the chat wherever you are. If you're watching on uh, LinkedIn or Twitch, YouTube or Facebook, uh, love to hear your feedback. Especially if you got any encouragement, I can always use some encouragement. Uh, but I love uh, uh, answering questions that gives me, you know, at least a, a bit of, uh, encouragement that, that folks are engaged and, um, you know, getting some value out of, uh, the stream. All right. So the next thing that we need to do, we got, we get the file. Um, so we've got the script file um, from the dialog. Now we need to uh, open and read that file and then parse the contents of that file. Uh, maybe validate that what the, the contents are, are marked down or at least text. Uh, or, you know, the, it can be, it can actually be HTML too. It, uh, a markdown file can have in it uh, H valid HTML and it will treat that uh, or um, the markdown converter will essentially ignore and, and just pass through any HTML that's in the uh, markdown format uh, when it converts it. So um, what we expect is for a is a text file or markdown file to contain uh, a mixture of text, markdown, and possibly HTML. Um, so we need to read the file, parse it, turn it into HTML, and then we need to hand that off to the the browser window so that it can display that as the script. And the way um, we can do that, with, the way we can communicate that is to use IPC. IPC is Interprocess Communications. Um, the menu system and the code that we're looking at right now, that runs on the main process, which is the Node.js environment. And we need to communicate the, the final markup, mark, uh, HTML, to the the window, which is called a renderer, uh, which is in the Chrome or Chromium environment. And we use uh, IPC as a publish subscribe channel to send messages back and forth between main and any renderers. So you can have you can have more than one renderer. You can have more than one window in your applications. Um, so the one thing I want to do is right now in the teleprompter preload, we have our code today that um, does the work of converting Markdown to HTML. What I would like to do is refactor this and move it into a module by itself that we can use um, inside other use other places so the there's an async get content function which will refactor there's a convert markdown to html there's this code that we use to inject heading anchors and that's what allows us to do the 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 keyboard support uh, sets up the the uh, HTML that we need to support jumping from one section of the script to another. 
And we need to take all of this kind of stuff and move it out into another place. I'm going to create a, a new file under utils and call it um, let's just call it content.js. And I'll take the the code, take these functions, including um, some of the require uh, some of the modules or libraries that we're we're pulling in. And I'm going to paste those in here. And let's um, we also need this code that is um, getting the content and converting that to to HTML and then updating the HTML with our logic. So let's create a new function. It's going to be an async function because um, it's got um, some code in there that is calling other async functions. So async function... Um, Let's see. Content uh, read and convert markdown. And we'll paste this into here. All right. return updated HTML. Now, what we need to be able to do is, um, well, first of all, right now, all of these functions are private. They're, they're private to this JavaScript file. In the Node.js world, in order to make any function public or accessible as a a module, we need to use the, the magic syntax module.exports and give it a uh, an object or a function or something that we export from this file that exposes that to other parts of your code. So we're we're going to uh, we only need to expose one function, and that is the read and convert markdown. And this read and convert markdown, instead of just getting content that is hard coded, and um, we want to uh, allow a file to be passed in. So let's just call it file path. Whoops. File path. And we'll also pass file path to get content. And for good measure, let's let's wrap all of this in a try catch. We'll console log the error. And return null, which will be the indicator that, you know, something didn't work right <laughs> with the uh, 
with loading that file. So up here in our get content, um, we don't need this anymore. We're going to use a file path. So we're going to read the file and return it. So, I mean, we could refactor this. Um, we don't really need a separate function anymore because it's just, it's really just one line of code. Um, so let's do that. Let's, let's move this line. down here this is the markdown and now we we can eliminate this function and normally I am all for breaking up uh, code into separate functions it's much more it's easier to reason about your code um, but if if the only thing that a function is doing is calling another, you know, one other function, it may not make a whole lot of sense if it's just one line of code. Um, in this case, you know, I think it's okay to to go the other direction to uh, reduce the number of functions in this module. Now that we are not building a path, we don't need this path uh, library anymore. The path library is used to do things like figure out, um, join paths together, uh, use uh, path separators in a platform agnostic way. Um, there's all kinds of great utilities, but uh, what ESLint is telling us is that we're no longer referencing this module anymore, which is great. So we can get rid of it. Okay, so now our you know, read the markdown, convert it to HTML, uh, inject anchors for um, keyboard clicker support and we're good to go we now have a content.js and if we want to let's since we already have a section of code that's working uh let's let's refactor that first just to make sure that this is doing what we expect it to do I'm going to comment out this code and up here I'm going to um, Requiring our content module. We've got our file name here. And I'm going to content or let's say markdown equals content dot and our function is read and convert markdown with the file name Let's await that and return the markdown
So this becomes markdown. And, you know, there's, there's things here we don't need anymore, but we'll leave them, instead of commenting them out, we'll leave them for now. And let's just see if the application still works like we expect it with that code being now in a separate module. And it does work. So here's our, our script that's in that content.markdown file. So the refactoring, refactoring did its job. Let's quit that. So now we can uh, do away with this code that we don't need anymore. Deleting code is awesome. We don't need these modules anymore because they're they're now modules that are part of the utility class or module that, utility module that that we created. Now, eventually, we're, we'll get rid of this code too uh, because um, the the logic to load the content file will no longer be here it'll be in the file open and this will receive the uh, contents uh, by message so let's start down that path we've got we've already got an instance of ipc renderer here in this module that's what the as i mentioned before ipc is uh, how we communicate back and forth between the main uh, Node.js environment and the, the renderer environment. Um, so we'll use this to subscribe to a channel that we listen for updates on. But first, b b before we do that, let's go back to um, our menu here. So here's our our script file that we're getting from the um, the file open dialog. We can now use the same module that we created. This is in util. utils slash content. Um, and in the Node.js world, in case you haven't seen this before, this is the a relative path to the module that exists in our project. And we don't have to specify the .js extension. We could, if we wanted to, we could be explicit and say, this is the full path to that module file. But when we use common JS, which is the default and the kind of old school uh, way of writing code in Node.js, we don't have to specify the extension. And just FYI, if you do um, decide to work with Node.js in the future or Electron in the future and you want to use uh, ES modules instead of common JS. So ES modules are ones that use the import export syntax and uh, you know a bunch of other cool modern JavaScript syntax. Those are um, module um, files. And when you use module files, you do have to specify Say, say if we were refactoring all this code to use ES modules instead of common JS, we would say import um, the name of the you know function name from 
utils content, we you do have to specify the extension. Um, one way to do that is to use um, module JS or a .mjs extension. Um, and you would have to rename your files in your project to use MJS. Another thing is if you, another way to do it is in the package.json, you can change a setting there that's, that, that tells Node every JS file that you encounter in this project, treat that as a module and not a uh, common JS. So just heads up on, on that kind of stuff. So here's our content module. And in here, down here, we want to load, use um, markdown equals content dot read and convert markdown. And we pass our script file. And we need to await that. Which is fine. We already have an async um, on this function, so we can use the await keyword. If markdown send markdown to you know adding myself a note send this markdown to uh, the renderer or in our case browser window because one of the things we did last time was we went ahead and um, we pa we're passing in the browser window to this menu module so we can set up um, our communication. We can, we can send a message to that browser window to say, here, here are, here's the content to display. Else, um, if, if this comes back null, then we know either this was an empty file or, you know, something, something happened. Um, we need to uh, again, since we are not in this, this is this code is taking place behind the scenes. It's in the 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 main process. We need to send a message to the browser window to tell it to display an error message to the uh, the user. So I hadn't really thought through this, but we need we need two channels. We need one to for sending messages from main process for the markdown that we've converted and we need a channel to send um, hey something something wrong happened. <laughs> kind of messages. But for now, uh, let's just console log the markdown or console log there was an error converting Markdown. And that's all we need for now. In our teleprompter preload, right now we're we're getting that content and displaying it. I am going to comment out that code. So what we should see when the application loads is the default HTML, which is 
Electron Teleprompter, please use the File Open menu or keyboard shortcut to open a Markdown file as a script. So let's run this. And verify. Yep, it, that's what it displays. Use the File Open menu to open a Markdown file as a script. So Command O. I'm going to open content.markdown. And, you know, it's not doing anything in the UI, but we see here in the console that it uh, it logged the converted HTML. So you see, if, you, if we open up content.markdown and we kind of show these, these side by side, you see that um, one hash turns into an H1 tag, two hashes turn into H2s, a bulleted list turn, turns into an unordered list in HTML, and a block of text turns into a paragraph um, with opening and closing paragraph tags. So in this way, and there and there's more to Markdown syntax. You can there's ways of doing like uh, links and emphasis and underlines or italics, bold. Um, that's all you know. Much easier to to write by hand than to write uh, HTML. It's a syntax that you know fairly easy to to pick up and learn. Um, which I, I hope, you know, I'm a big fan of Markdown syntax. I've been using it for years now for like documentation so that I don't have to write HTML. I can just use this kind of simplified syntax and have it converted to, to HTML for me. All right, everything's working like we expect it to so far. So now, we need to do the work of using IPC to send messages back and forth. So what we're going to do is subscribe to an event. I'm going to say IPC renderer on. So when it receives a message on a channel, let's just call it content. Um, then we get an event and args, and we need to do something with that. So I could go and read the documentation right now to uh, to see what event and args are are going to be, what I should expect them to be. But I'm just going to use console log to, as you know, that's our our debugging friend. So I'm going to say console log event. Console log args. And from our menu, um, let's comment out this. We know that's working. Let's say browser window dot Oh, yeah. So I think we need IPC. IPC main here, and we use IPC main dot, I think it's emit.
handle listeners on Let me just do a quick Google search. Electron JS IPC main send to renderer. web contents dot send also possible to send messages from the main process to the renderer process see web contents dot send for more information okay so down here here's an example of we've created a browser window loaded a file and then web contents dot send So web contents is a property of the browser window. Browser window dot web. Whoops. Dot web content. IntelliSense is not helping me out. Yeah, that's what we're supposed to have. Dot send. <laughs> IntelliSense is confused, which either means the documentation is is not correct or something else is up. But let's Let's just try this for now. So content is the name of the channel that we we are subscribing to on this end. And we want to send the markdown. So let's try running that and see what happens. Open content. Nothing happened. Nothing happened. We didn't... It just kind of went nowhere. We didn't get any error messages. I'm going to come in out that for a second and console log browser window just to see, just to make sure that this object hat is, is available. And that it has a web contents property. Rerun it. File open. We do have a browser window, but it is not reporting a web content. So the Whatever, there's DevTools web contents. So this code that we're seeing here is, is out, of out of date. This is not the way to do it, apparently.
Let's go. Let's check out the IPC tutorial. Renderer to main one way. Renderer.send on the preload. Renderer to main two way. It's, it's fairly easy to do like two-way communications that's initiated from from the, the renderer, uh, which is the more common scenario. Um, because the the message that's received on the on the main renderer side has a way to reply back to that on that same channel, which is fine. Um, pattern three main to renderer. This is what what we need. Hopefully, this this code's better. Oh. And there we go. It's it's use it's doing exactly what we want to do. Web con main window <laughs> uh, dot web contents dot send. That obviously did not work for us. So in the preload, what did they got? This may be the breakdown here. They're using, in this um, example, they're using context bridge. It's a pretty complicated um bit of technology the way that they're doing um this preload system that is kind of in between the two environments preload happens before a browser window is created and it allows the developer to set up some things like like hooks and uh, messaging that is um before the sandbox environment is created. So all of this is kind of outside of the, the sandbox. Um, they've tried to make Electron more secure by default. And so doing this um, allows them to, doing it this way with the preload, it still allows you the, the ability to set up some some communications between main and the renderer um but it is a little bit harder to, to wrap your your mind around um i am not as familiar with this con context bridge but you know what let's um 
let's just see if this works. I'm going to stop the application and um, in our preload, I'm going to add context bridge and use this code um, handle content let's call it update content Um, and Hmm. Now I'm confused again because it doesn't look like they're using this context bridge in the documentation down here. In the documentation down here, they've got This is the renderer. No. This is the preload script. They're not using context bridge. They're using add document loaded. And they're doing exactly the same kind of thing that, that we were doing in our code. Let's let's take this context bridge back out. I know we're 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 past time a couple of minutes um while i'm looking at this last thing before we we drop uh i want to see if there are any other questions or comments or anything that anyone has i want to compare Pretty much the same thing, and it doesn't really, you know, I'm calling this event and args. This is calling event and value. Um, no big deal there. There's no, oh, oh, man. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> I just realized. Let me take this back out. This console log, That this is for the renderer which is the browser window. So things that are are sent to the console log here are going to show up in the browser and not the the you know the terminal. Ah, man. So it's pro it's probably working like we expected. I just forgot to look in the right spot. <laughs> hang on hang on let's let's take a look here go back to our menu js code and let's send the contents this this right here was a maybe what they call a red herring it it web contents may still be part of that object. It just wasn't showing up in the console log for some reason. Probably because it's there the two string method doesn't have all of that stuff in it. It's like it's supposed to. Um so now if we run 
if we run the app, npm start, I can do command option I, I hope. Oh, no, I can't because I don't have that menu anymore. Okay. Oh, <laughs> this is, this is ridiculous. Um, let me, one of these has got, where is it? Toggle dev tools. So the role is view, the view menu. I'm going to add this back into our, our menu structure. All right, let's try running that again. NPM start, view, toggle developer tools. Now we've got our developer console open. I don't know if you can read this, this text right here is just so um, close to the gray that it's, may not be readable, but you know, our, I uh, can't even select it, but it's there. So now if I do uh, open, open the content, there it is. I was looking in the wrong spot. So event has got information about the, just the uh, uh, messaging and args is the content. So I close that and we come back here to our window in the preload. We can rename args to content. And we can use this code up here that's commented out. And set this to content. Let's run it. File open, content, boom. That worked. Application working like it's supposed to. So now, I mean, we, we still need to test for like, um, you know, a, there was errors with the, the log or, or errors with the uh, loading the file or converting the content. Uh, we can do that on the next stream, but um, I am, I am super happy that it, uh, <laughs> it works. It was just my error on, on where the, the, the console log appears. Cool. That's a good stopping point. I'm going to add what we have so far. Refactors code to load markdown from files. Any file supplied by um, user. And I'll push that. I mean, there's some console logs and other, I mean, other stuff that we should uh, clean up at some point. But um, thanks again for joining on the stream. I, I hope you learned some things. I hope you, uh, you know, learn from my mistakes. Uh, avoid the, the the things that I run into. Uh, I was kind of stomping my my own foot there for a minute um but i hope you enjoyed this hope you got something out of it and i hope you uh join me again um next week 
still plan to uh, to do these every Thursday at 2 p.m. Eastern or whatever time zone that you're in. I hope you have a blessed day. Um, take the the content, uh, get the uh, the source code, which is available on my GitHub repository at github.com slash reverent geek slash electron teleprompter. Send me any questions that you have on there. Uh, you can file issues or uh, send pull requests. And um, I am Reverend Geek on Twitter and other places. You can email me, david at reverentgeek.com. I'd love to hear from you if you have any uh, questions or issues. And thank you again for joining. And I'll see you again on the next All Hands on Tech Live developer stream with your host, David Deal.